number nine from the 2007 Higher Maths paper one. Ten mark question this time. And we're getting bigger towards the end of the paper. This is the curve sketch. Stationary points, sketching curves. Where does it cut the axis? Where does it take a turn? Draw the picture. Well, the first part. Find the exact values where the graph cuts the x and y axis. Well, easy bit first. Y axis, if you're on the y axis, you know that the x coordinate must be zero, in which case y is going to equal, remember y equals the value of the function, y will equal zero minus zero. I'll just put zero minus zero, which is zero. So it cuts at zero, zero. That means it's also cutting the x axis there. B, x axis. If you're on the x-axis, you've got no height. Then y should be 0. So making y equals 0, I've got this. 3x minus x cubed equals 0. Take out an x. That's x times 3 minus x squared equals 0. That's not quite the difference of two squares, so I don't think I really want to factorise it. You could, if you like, factorise it to the root 3's, but I'll just set, solve that separately. That means that either x equals 0, which I had already, or x squared equals 3, in which case x equals negative root 3 or positive root 3. So the points where it cuts the axis are 0, 0, that does for them both, 0, negative root 3, and 0, root 3. Part B, find the coordinates of the stationary points of that function and determine their natures. Well, let's do it. That's differentiate. Differentiate that, so it's multiply by the power, take one off the power. That linear term will just go down to 3. Multiply by the power 3, take one off the power 2. And then make a statement. Don't forget to do that. You've got a stationary point, or you can get away with an abbreviation if you like, if the derivative ever equals 0. The derivative gives the gradients of the graphs. It will only be stationary if it's temporarily horizontal. So I've got this equation to solve then. 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Factorise it. 3 times 1 minus x squared equals 0. So 3 times, and then you can either just say x squared would have to equal 1. So you've got plus or minus 1. Or I'll just factorise it. 1 minus x. Whoops. 1 plus x which means that I've got x equals negative 1 or x equals 1. Just reversing the order to put them into numerical order. Find the corresponding y-coordinates. Well, if x equals negative 1, I'll put it over here. If x equals negative 1, then y will equal, and it will come from here, that's going to be 3 times negative 1 minus negative 1 cubed. Notice I've switched here to y-coordinates, thinking of the graph rather than values of functions. In a graph, the y-coordinate is the value of the function. So that's going to come to negative 3, take away, and it's still a negative 1 with an odd power. So it's negative 3, I'll just put it down, negative 3, take away a negative 1, that's a negative 3 plus a 1, so that's negative 2. So I've got one point at negative 1, negative 2. If x equals 1, then y will be, popping it into here, 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed. That's simpler this time because it's just 3 take away 1, which is positive 2. So there's the other point. The other point's at 1, 2. Now what's the nature of these two stationary points? So you put down your nature table. You can put down your nature table if you like. I'm going to put down a table of signs. Something happens at negative 1. It was stationary there. Something happens at 1. This is a smooth function. It changed smoothly between them. So I've just got to consider what was it doing before it reached that point? What was it doing between? And what was it doing afterwards for x? And I'll get that not by evaluating it at particular values. I'll get that from this expression. 3 is always positive. So I've just got to consider these two factors. And that will give me the value of f dash dx. So I'm not interested in the actual values, it's just the signs of them. Well, 1 minus x, that's going to be 0 when x is 1. Before that, notice this graph here is going down the way. It was positive before it, 
and it was negative afterwards. This one was 0 at negative 1. Notice as a climbing up linear expression. It was negative before it and it's positive afterwards. Multiplying them together, negative, 0, positive, 0, negative. Going down, going along, going up, going along, going down. Although it's no surprise anyway, that's a standard graph. It's a negative x cubed graph. An x cubed graph looks like this. So a negative x cubed graph looks like this. A minimum, then a maximum. Take a note of that. That's a minimum turning point, And that's a maximum turning point. Just take a note of it here. Negative 1, negative 2 is a minimum turning point. 1, 2 is a maximum turning point. Part C, sketch the graph. Only one mark. So it take almost as long to sketch the graph as do that previous part that was worth 7. Well, not quite as long, but it's still quite a tedious thing whenever I ask you to sketch a graph. Right, here's my axis. It cut at the origin. It cut at negative root 3, so that's about negative, it's about negative 1.7 or so, so negative root 3. It cut at the same distance side, root 3. It's got a turn at negative 1, negative 2, so about here, and another turn at 1, 2, that's about there. I'll need to put all this information in. And then finally, sketch the graph through that. Like that. There's the graph of y equals f of x, and there's f of x stated up there. Okay, it didn't take quite as long.